In this video, I'm going to walk through a typical mole calculation where we will try to find the empirical formula of a compound. Empirical, empirical just means based on data. So when we talk about finding the empirical formula for a compound, we're talking about um, data-based inference of the chemical compound. So a good example here is that magnesium metal can burn when heated. Um, when this happens, oxygen in the air chemically bonds to the magnesium atoms to form the compound magnesium oxide. If a 3.50 gram piece of magnesium ribbon is completely burned, it will produce a sample of magnesium oxide with a mass of 5.80 grams. If you've ever seen this demonstration, you know that a lot of uh, smoky magnesium oxide forms. You would need to capture all of that product and measure its mass to actually get data like this. So just kind of thinking about the data that we have here, We have magnesium reacting with some oxygen. To give us a compound of magnesium and oxygen. And what we're trying to figure out here is what ratio are the atoms combining? So I can write it something like this. I don't know the subscripts in the compound without doing some calculating. So the first thing we would need to do here is figure out what is the molar mass of each of these elements. The molar mass is just the grams per mole. So if we go to the periodic table and find magnesium, we see this number here, uh, 24.31. You can think of that number as the relative mass of magnesium, but it also represents the grams in one mole of magnesium. So I can write 24.31 grams per mole, or what that really means is 24.31 grams of magnesium is equivalent to one mole of magnesium. And each element has its own um, different molar mass because each element has its own relative mass. If we go and look for oxygen, oxygen is here. We see that the molar mass amount is 16.00. So to say 16.00 grams per mole is to say there are 16 grams of oxygen in one mole of oxygen. And you can see we've set up two ratios here that can be used as conversion factors. So going back to the problem, it says that we have a 3.50 gram piece of magnesium ribbon burning. We're going to assume all 3.50 grams uh, reacts. So I'm just going to note that up here. And we want to do a mole conversion from grams for magnesium. So I will start with my given measurement. 3.50 grams of magnesium. And when I set up my conversion factor, I know that I want to cancel grams of magnesium. And I'd like to know how many moles of magnesium that is. We can go back here to this fact that one mole of magnesium is 24.31 grams. Notice I flipped the sense of the conversion factor so that grams of magnesium will cancel. So mathematically, what I'm doing is taking 3.50 times 1 and uh, dividing that by 24.31. Let's go ahead and do that. 
So 3.50 divided by 24.31 equals not even a mole, right? We've got less than a mole here, 0.14397 with lots of other digits. I want to round it to three significant digits because my initial measurement has three. So I'm not going to write 0.143, I'm going to round it to 0 0.144. And that is a quantity. That's measuring how many uh, magnesium atoms are involved in the reaction. Not sure why my zero is black there. Uh, so that is a way of quantifying how much magnesium is involved in the reaction. Number four says the additional mass of the product comes from chemically joined oxygen atoms. How many grams of oxygen bonded with the magnesium? I wasn't given that number straight away but I was given that the magnesium oxide product, if we were to collect it all and measure its mass, would have a mass of 5.80 grams. We can assume that that additional mass comes from the oxygen that joined to the magnesium. So I need to figure out what, what would be that mass that gets me up to 5.80 grams total. So I need to subtract out, if I take the magnesium oxide and I subtract out the magnesium mass, what's left is the oxygen mass that, that bonded. So 5.80 grams of product minus the 3.50 grams of magnesium that we started with tells me that 2.30 grams of oxygen bonded with the magnesium. So I'll just go back to complete my note here. That helps us see that these two masses join together in the compound. So I need to figure out not what mass of oxygen I have, what quantity of oxygen atoms are in the product. So again, I need to do a grams to moles conversion. 2.30 grams of oxygen. Again, setting up the conversion factor. I want to cancel grams of oxygen. I want to end up in moles of oxygen. And I can go back to my molar mass. That told me that 16 grams of oxygen is equivalent to one mole. I want to flip the sense of the conversion so that I cancel the gram amount. So the math that I'm doing here is taking 2.30 times one, which is 2.30, dividing by the molar mass of 16 grams. So 2.30 divided by 16.00 is 0.14375. Again, I want to limit my answer to three significant digits. So I'm going to report that as zero Point one four four moles of oxygen. So different masses were involved, but what we see here is that the mole amount is actually the same. And again, mole is measuring quantity of atoms. So when we compare those, it's not super interesting, but we do notice that the mole amount is the same. So if we compare the moles of magnesium to the moles of oxygen, I can kind of set up a ratio. Let me go ahead and change that. I'm going to put magnesium on top just because it's listed first in the formula. and that reacted and joined with 0.144 moles of oxygen. So what I see here, if I divide it out, is basically a one to one ratio. So one mole of magnesium atoms is reacting with one mole 
of oxygen atoms. Now, in some cases, you might not see this. You might see double or triple, or you might even see like a two to three ratio. You have to look at this mole ratio to figure out what is the atom ratio that's combining, because a mole of anything has the same number of units. Um, so what we can assume here, the inference that we can make is that one atom of magnesium is reacting with one atom of oxygen. So the formula, the chemical formula, which we said we didn't know coming in, must be one and one. We have good evidence here that the empirical formula is MgO, meaning Mg1O1. But of course, we don't write it like that. Thinking back to what you might know about ionic bonding, this should make sense. If you think about the charge that would be present on a magnesium atom and the charge present on an oxygen atom, but I'll leave that discussion for another day. So hopefully that gives you a good example of how to find the empirical formula of a compound based on the masses that join up. Thanks for watching.